Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Okay, gaming is one of the most satisfactory entertainment that we can find everywhere these days. From mobile gamers to console to PCs, there's a lot of platforms through which you can get this entertainment. So, last time I was at my cousin's place and we were playing asphalt. I kind of told him that I'm going to come up with this gaming setup that has a steering wheel and a shifter that has a nitro button dedicated for its purpose to control the various aspects of the game using Adreno. So he was pretty amped up to hear that and uh, yeah I finally completed the project. I kind of gave him the video call and gave a brief about what things do here and uh, yeah I hope you like it too. So let's see what we need for the project firstly and then uh, second of all we will look at the connections and the code uh, and finally you guys will be able to see the setup in action. The materials that you need are pretty simple you can find that in any local hardware store, electronic store and stationery. So yeah starting from the important part you need servo motors so I used one MG995 and two SG90 models because of variation in torque that's required stylus we need stylus as well don't miss that out potentiometers to control the servos some aluminium foils might do and uh, cardboard pvc tube in this case i used a rectangle pvc tube you can actually go for the circular one if you want to it doesn't matter it also depends upon the kind of frame you want yeah jumper cables and breadboard for multiplying a few connections yeah the most important part is the microcontroller itself and that's Adreno Uno in this case okay before we get to the connections let me just explain how I managed to put things in place and set the whole thing up okay I'm sitting on the floor right now because the workbench space is not sufficient as you can see it's a complete mess over there and uh, yeah the steering is now hooked up Okay, I'm pretty satisfied with the setup, but uh, yeah, because uh, I used only cardboard for the majority and uh, hot glue, which I completely disagree as a permanent solution. As of now, the steering is pretty stable. I can rotate that. There is no movement. Yeah, there's a pencil that goes into that uh, metal tube. Yeah, I also have the bottle in between tube and the frame. I'm so done with this. So this is how the potential meter for the steering is going to be hooked up to its respective servo. Okay, I'm still on the ground and uh, we are now nearing to the completion. So uh, here is the lever and its potential meter. Alright, so what I've done here is I have attached a PVC to its PVC platform that has its lever connected to its potentiometer. For example, when we pull that, this L lever engages the potentiometer, therefore the potentiometer uh, engages. So yeah, this push button that controls one of the SG90 servo will go up there and the wire will come through there along with some of the cables of the potentiometer and from that it's gonna go to Adreno or the bus, whatever it is. Okay, let's take a very quick look at the connection. The connections are very simple. First of all, we have to separate 5 volt and ground. So, we, have to, we are basically multiplying these pins by connecting 5 volt to positive because there are 35 rows in the breadboard or 60, 65 rows in the breadboard. So, you basically multiply 5 volts and you get 60 pins or uh, whatever row count on the breadboard is similar uh, situation applies to the ground pin as well so let's say we are going to connect 5 volt to the positive bus uh, ground to negative bus so positive bus is going to be converted to 5 volts and the negative bus is going to be converted to ground well now let's take a look at servos and its respective potentiometer and the push button so first of all let's take a look at servo 1 and its respective potentiometer how can we hook that up a signal wire of servo 1 represented by an orange cable needs to be connected to digital pin 5 make sure you have the symbol because if you're going to connect signal wire to any other pin that does not have the symbol for example uh, 2 and 4 that will not work signal will not be taken in and will not be processed at all so it is advisable that you connect this to uh, pin 5 or 3 or 6 depending upon the program so in the program i have linked servo 1 to a1 so therefore it is advisable to stick to the information or source given over here yeah so the red wire that is a positive needs to go to 5 volts in the Arduino but here we will be connecting all 5 volts connections to positive bus and all ground connections to negative bus 
because they have multiplied its connection and the ground pin of the uh, servo represented by brown color will go to the negative bus okay potentiometer needs to be hooked up as well so uh, first of all position the potentiometer in such a way that the knob is facing you and uh, the flat side of the potentiometer is facing away from you in order to not have polarity problems you swap pin 3 and 1 you're going to have difference in polarity and the servo is going to respond in a completely opposite way to what you actually want so pin 1 of potentiometer needs to go to 5 volts that is the positive bus pin 3 will go to the negative uh, bus that is the ground pin 2 will go to A1 analog input 1 in UNO well servo 1 and its respective potentiometer is now hooked up similar process applies for servo 2 and servo 3 but let me just explain it in brief signal wire of servo 2 needs to go to digital pin 3 in UNO the red cable needs to go to 5 volts on the breadboard that is the positive bus and the ground cable represented by a brown line needs to go to the negative bus that is the ground okay the potentiometer is hooked up similar to that of servo 1 the 5 volt needs to go to positive bus ground needs to go to negative bus pin 2 has to go to A0 on Adreno let's now look at servo 3 and its respective push button so signal wire of servo 3 needs to go to digital pin 6 in UNO positive wire represented by the color red needs to go to 5 volts that is the positive bus on the breadboard ground cable represented by the brown color from the servo motor has to go to the ground in breadboard that is the negative bus well push button needs to be hooked up as well so there is no polarity over here you can literally connect any one pin to unlock pin 2 in UNO any one to the ground in breadboard that is a negative bus so even if you interchange the polarity will not change as the only action is to engage the motor while it's been switched on well that's pretty much it for the connections right now in, in the end to hold the mobile and control the accelerometer of it that is the steering control we have this uh, setup that's basically mobile stand from a selfie stick and i have attached a perpendicular line to its top and uh, two servo motors in either sides and uh, yeah they have a column running from the tip of the shaft angled its way in such a way that when the servo shaft rotates it has a direct contact over the screen so you might be wondering why is there a wire running from the tip of the stylus let's try to understand the concept of a stylus so stylus are made up of conductive materials such as metal so uh, what that does is it implements a secure connection between your hand and the smart screen so when you take a knife and you try scratching the smartphone screen though though it's not advisable it does not move the screen does not respond in most cases the reason is you'll be holding onto the handle if you try holding onto the blade it might work so the ultimate goal is to have a secure connection between your hand and the tip of the stylus so that when you engage the lever or push the button there is a contact between the stylus tip and the screen so it can engage whatever action that you want so that's pretty much it for now yeah and uh, this setup has been connected to the servo behind using its uh, connecting arm so the servo arm is pretty much stuck to the back of this mobile holder and uh, yeah and the reason I have used aluminium foil is just to conduct so this PV this is a PVC material that is made up of plastic so plastic does not conduct we all know that so as I mentioned before to have a secure connection between your hand and the tip of the stylus I have the wire connecting the tip of the stylus and that's going into this aluminium foil so when I touch this there's a connection between the stick and the style so that's pretty much equal to me putting my hands on the screen itself anyways uh, similar action has been implemented for the touch button so basically when you push this button once we have the servo touching the screen and coming back so yeah so when you hold on to it the loop repeats so it touches the screen and come back so it goes in front it comes back so it repeats until you take your hand off the button so when you want that action to engage a button on the screen you also have to have a secure connection so therefore i have a wire running from the tip of this stylus to this button so in our case the phone will be bolted on or hooked up to servo 1 
and uh, this is servo 2 and that is servo 3 yeah and the reason for this very very clumsy setup is because this is just the testing purpose i didn't design this for actual use so i will improvise it and i will put another video regarding the update so until then stay tuned and that's pretty much it regarding the steering assembly and the setup itself so yeah let's take a short look at the program actually i will be going through the important lines alone so first of all you have to install the Arduino IDE software for those of you who are new to this and yeah you also don't have to include or download any sort of library that we are using in this program because the only library we will be using is the servo library that is already installed or that actually comes along with the program when you download okay so yeah this program will be included or linked down in the description so you can go and check it out for yourself first of all i have included the servo library that is the most logical thing to do second of all i have defined my first servo this servo will be controlled using a push button that has two pins so you really don't have to worry about the polarity right so one pin can go to analog input two and the other will obviously go to the ground in our case we'll be plugging it to the negative bus in the breadboard because we have actually connected or converted that negative bus into ground from Arduino you know okay that's not the part let's take a look at the program here and uh, we have connected the servo digital pin or the signal pin to PW pin 6 and yeah that's pretty much it's the setup for our first servo using the push button so over here we have defined uh, an angle and step angle so what is a step angle is basically the angle achieved by the output shaft in every step because uh, servo motors are referred to as stepper motors which basically means that it will operate in a sequence of steps that's how it can position itself in an accurate position on for normal DC motor that you get they focus more on RPM sort of stuff so how fast they can spin right so it doesn't really matter about at what time they have to stop spinning in order to achieve the required position so that can be achieved by the stepper motors yeah so therefore we have defined in our case stepper angle so in one step the angle achieved will be 10 degrees so we have it there and then over here we have defined minimum angle and maximum angle for uh, feasibility I have reduced the operating range so servo's operating range will be 180 by default so I have reduced it to 60 I will basically attach a uh, stylus to it so the shorter the distance is the less time it will take to touch the screen of whatever action you need to call so 60 can be there or if you are so precise in your calculations while you are designing the stylus holder for that you can actually go for 40 or 50 yeah that's pretty much it for our uh, my servo that is our first servo yeah, let's go to the second servo these two lines has to be included don't forget about that for the second servo named as servo 1 I basically uh, could have gone 1 2 3 in sequential order but I took this from different programs and altered it so I am just checking with whatever was there so in order for feasibility or and simplicity for my convenience I just did it so if you want you can change it here but if you change it here you have to change everywhere that says servo 1 so I was a little too lazy for that so I just stuck with whatever it was yeah so uh, over here we have uh, connected our potentiometer so this servo will be controlled using a potentiometer so potentiometer has three pins so the middle pin needs to go to a0 that is analog input 0 in Arduino you know therefore we have defined it that way the other two pins the first pin and the last pin doesn't really matter those are just ground and uh, the positive if the servo is responding the opposite way that you actually want to basically what we try to achieve here is when you turn the potentiometer's knob to let's say right side the servo's output shaft will all should also turn right side so if it is turning left side or if it is turning the other way around you basically have to swap the first and the third pin from the potentiometer in the breadboard so you basically have to let's say if you given pin 1 to ground then you have to make pin 2 to ground so yeah you basically have to swap the connections for the first and the last pin in the potentiometer yeah that's pretty much it regarding our potentiometer for the first servo in our case servo 1 yeah the signal wire of servo 1 in our case will go to PW pin 3 in Arduino Uno and then yeah and we have also included int servo 1 value 
okay um, servo 2 is very similar to servo 1 but all we have to do is to just exchange a pin that is uh, servo pin and its respective potentiometer pin because that will be the only thing that is identical between both servos right so the middle pin of servo 2's potentiometer is connected to analog input 1 in uh, Arduino Uno so therefore we have to find that and signal wire of servo 2 will go to PW pin 5 and therefore we have to find that and then obviously into the servo 2 value Coming to the setup, we have serial begin, that's a common function, and then uh, we have this that is in regards to the push button servo that we have included in the initial case over here. And uh, yeah, this is nothing but a uh, serial monitor, it doesn't actually matter, you can actually go ahead and remove that. It uh, doesn't really matter as far as you're concerned, only about the output or the uh, practical application of the program but it's just for your digital application that's no big deal yeah and then we have attached servo 1 and servo 2 to its respective servo pin and as we defined it there coming to the loop section of this program the second servo in our case servo 1 over here because that's how it's named right so we have connected servo 1 and uh, potentiometer so potentiometer is an analog input so therefore we said analog read Coming to this line, this basically represents the operating range of this particular servo. We have uh, 0 and then we have 90, this is all that matters. So if we interchange any one number that is I have, for example, this is the this is how it was. Okay, but I have changed 180 to 90, that's basically what I need. Because when you, I will be using this for maybe braking application in the racing game. So, brakes are something that needs to be on time so therefore the greater the angle is the more time it will take for the stylus to get to the breaking point actually in our case touching the screen so yeah with precise calculations in our uh, lever from servo we can actually achieve that in pretty short interval of time so therefore we have 90 degrees servo 1 is now hooked up to its program and servo 2 needs to be done that's pretty much similar instead we have 180 instead of 90 instead of servo 1 we basically have servo 2 yeah other than that it is i can't see any difference yeah, instead of servo 1 value we have servo 2 value that's it yeah and of course the delay function looking at this function we have included a if statement what we have here is a low and a high function so in uh, low level language or in computer language or in binary language one means positive and low or zero basically means negative so when button is pushed it is counted as one so what if the button is pushed so when button is pushed we have angle equals angle plus step angle remember here we define step angle to be 10 right here that's how it is so if initial angle is zero we have zero plus 10 in our case that will be our new angle so this process will continue till our maximum value is reached so that is this program that will take care of that action right reaching till the maximum value that is assigned till 60 degrees in our case so this is a simple uh, formula to start from zero and go till the maximum value of whatever has been assigned and this is the program to make it go till the maximum value that's been assigned Remember as I told you when the button is pushed the uh, server will go to its maximum value and then come back to its original position and coming back is taking care of this part of the program yeah and uh, these are just the finishing statements so yeah you have to include that yeah that, that's pretty much the end of the program uh, let's see how it works anyways stopping it here okay uh, now that's gonna wrap up for today's video so first of all congratulations to you because you have made it till the end and uh, for your information the gameplay using this setup will be uploaded separately so uh, keep in mind that the game is still on it is not yet over because the build quality is very fragile and uh, I probably have to work on its rigidity to make it more robust with some tougher materials so i will be posting an update video regarding that with some modifications in it so until then stay tuned and have a great day